So this is a setup where I take um, the laptop batteries that I take out of laptops and I discharge them over a period of time. And then I record um, what the milliamps are. So a healthy battery, uh, most of these cells are uh, 2,200 milliamps, something, somewhere around there. So if it's significantly less than what's posted on the battery, then it's a, it's a very weak cell. So when I'm building a battery pack for the electric car, I have to match the packs that have the same milliamp hours, otherwise they're going to fight each other, one is going to uh, discharge uh, quicker. So I just have this um, 50 cent bulb from my car, and I'm discharging here. So the information I have right now, the lithium ion cell is at 3.14 volts, so it's almost fully discharged. Um, it's pulling 0.73 amps, and the milliamp hours, they count up, so I have it refresh every 10 seconds. So depending on how much power was used for 10 seconds, it calculates the milliamp hours. So this is the first cell I tested. So I went from 4.06 volts and on the machine I tested it and I got up to um, 1,233 milliamp hours um, from this voltage stock um, right out of the factory it's about 1,500 milliamp hours so this is very close to full capacity this is a 80% or something 90% which is amazing because when I found this it was 0 0.01 of a volt which is supposed to be over 3 volts so it's very bad for the cell. So the switch is tripped, so I have to actually press the reset button. So now what I can do is I can get the new cell and put it in to be discharged, press the reset, and we'll start counting again. 4.11 volts apparently. Um, and this is just from the old, this 8 milliamp is from the old test. So what I do is I just hit the reset button here. So what happens is the switch turned off, and this allows current to flow. So now we have an amperage, uh, 1.12 amps and we're counting up the milliamp hours. It counts up every 10 seconds. So as the voltage drops here, the amperage will also drop. So it stays around one amp. Um, at the very end, it goes down to like 0.6 of an amp, but it's better for the cell not to have so much amperage draw when it's low voltage. So this new cell is doing a great job. It's already over a thousand uh, milliamp hours. And the cutoff voltage here is 1.5, and then it recovers and comes back to once the load is removed, it's still going at 0.9 of an amp. So it's, it's great. So here I'm fully charging these cells so that I can drain them to check the capacity. And over here, I'm draining this cell. So I just continue until I've gone through all the cells that I have in these packs, in this pack. So I'm just turning off my computer now. It's nice, I don't have to have my computer running because this takes a long time with 100 cells takes about two hours to just charge each cell, so this will be running for a long time. So I just have um, a normal adapter, it's a 9 volt adapter, so the Arduino is running off the 9 volt instead of the USB plug. So that's pretty handy. So for my actual program, which I can post online, um, the voltage and the current are pretty much straightforward. You just divide by 200 and something because at 5 volts from the Arduino, um, you get 1,024. So if you divide by 200 and something, you get the voltage. And that's just the voltage that you measure in these uh, analog pins. Um, the milliamp hour is a little more complicated. You have um, a loop, and every time you go through the loop, you calculate the voltage and the amperage. I found the best was to have a 10 second delay for a loop, so you can see everything sitting, and it takes 10 seconds for it to um, come up with the new data. The milliamp hours, you can calculate um, the milliamps in each loop, and then just add it to the milliamps from before. So you say milliamps equals milliamps plus, and then the milliamps from that cycle and you divide by 0.36, which is um, for 10 seconds, because it's 3,600 um, for a second. So you just have your time frame and the amount of current that you have, and there you can calculate. It's like a little derivative, a little slice of the milliamp hours, and you keep just adding them up as they go. So you see the milliamp hours that just keep adding up. So every 10 seconds, it adds about 2 milliamp hours here. It should go to 494. Four. Yeah, exactly. So that's about, when it's around 1 amp, that's about what it's adding every time. Uh, you could just do it by time and just add up the milliamp hours, average your current, but this is more exact. Uh, as the voltage drops further, the amperage goes down to about 0.6, um, so you want a more accurate um, readout. I just want to go over exactly how this um, system works. So again, I'm testing the capacity of lithium ion cells. So you can get these used for very cheap, but if you don't know the capacity, it's very dangerous to match them together. So <clears throat> when I write, when I'm finished testing here, I write where I started, the voltage I started is 4.13 volts, is almost fully charged, and go as high as 4.2.
and then I write the milliamp hour. So this is pretty good. Um, stock some around 15, 16, as high as uh, 2,000, which would be 2 amp hours. Um, so this is really good if you mark it down, and then you can pair cells that are close to the same. Um, and I discharge them all to about 3 volts, which is the bottom. But um, I'm going to explain next how the circuit actually works. <clears throat> so when you're testing the cells, first you have to charge them um, fully. So you want to go over 4 volts, so you get the full capacity. Um, the best would be 4.2 if you can reach that. Um, then let them sit for a while to stabilize the voltage. And then I put them, so this is the test battery. So I have the Arduino. And what the Arduino is doing is I'm using this LCD screen. And Arduino is measuring the current flow through this resistor. It's a 0.2 volts, uh, 0.2 um, ohms. So I measure the voltage drop across here. And that goes through to an um, analog pin. So I'm measuring this voltage drop. And I can convert that um, with a simple equation V equals IR into current. So that's the current measurement you see here. So right now it's 0.95 amps. The voltage I take from this pin, so this is from the positive, and then this part is on ground, so I have to measure the actual voltage on the battery, and that's what I have here. So while it's running, the voltage drops quite a bit. Um, so that's the basic system. It's quite straightforward. Um, to make it safer, I have here is the uh, 2N222 uh, transistor, and then I have it um, on a pin here, which is uh, the data pin here, the digital pin. So I can set this pin to high, and then that sets off the transistor. I have a resistor here, so it doesn't pull too much current. And then this transistor, um, then you get power from this battery, which will actually uh, activate this uh, solenoid switch. So this is a high, it's 10 amp solenoid switch. Um, and I have it wired up so that it breaks the connection to this battery for discharging. <clears throat> so I have it connected through the, um, the common and the normally closed. So when this isn't activated, it's closed, so the circuit is closed, and this is what's happening now, it's flowing. So then in the program I can set an if statement, if the voltage is less than 1.5, then I put this pin to high, sets off the transistor, and that uh, opens up the circuit, so it breaks the circuit. So if I forget about this, it's not going to under-discharge the battery, because that would damage it. So that's very important, you don't want to um, destroy your batteries when you're testing the capacity. So. 1.5 I found through trial and error is close to um, just over 3 volts once the battery can settle. So when it's running, the actual voltage of the battery is much, much higher. It's 3.5 uh, or something. It's just because it's pulling amperage so the, the voltage dips.